Sorry for the confusing title. I didn't know how to word it any other way. I, 24-year-old female, have been married to my husband, 27-year-old male, for about two years. My sister, 26-year-old female, and her husband, 26-year-old male, are high school sweethearts. My sister and I have always been close. Despite the small age gap, she acted like my second mother, so I never doubted her in anything. Let's call her Jane. My husband, let's call him Bob, and I met at university. I was 20 and he was 23. He excelled in both academics, sports, and looks, and was well known around campus because of that, so obviously, I had a crush on him. Jane also attended the same university. Because I was new, she included me into her big circle of friends, and he was a part of that. I never made a move because I respected Jane and her friends. I didn't want to cause any trouble or make things awkward. She meant the world to me. Eventually, though, Bob and I became close friends. I grew to like him more. I also noticed that Jane rarely interacted with him, which was odd considering she was close to almost everyone in her circle. But I never said anything. I did end up telling her I liked him, though. She told me not to get my hopes up because he wasn't interested in any relationship. I was crushed, but tried to see him as a friend. He ended up confessing to me on my 21st birthday, and we began dating, which obviously resulted in marriage, and here we are now. During the entire time we were dating, Jane started to distance herself from me. We did have a talk about it when Bob and I first started dating, and I told her I'd break up with him if she wasn't comfortable with it considering he's her friend. But she rejected the idea. She hugged me and said she was happy for me, so I took her words for it. She still distanced herself, though. Her husband, boyfriend at the time, we'll call him Jim. He didn't attend university, but his dad has a small construction business that he works at. Jim's a good man. He did everything for Jane, but due to our culture, women can't leave the family house until marriage. So Jane and I still lived with our parents then. So when Jim had saved up enough money to buy a house, he proposed to Jane and she said yes. Fast forward a year and Bob proposed, I said yes. Up until now, all Jane had done was distance herself from me. But when I sat my family down and told them the news, she cried. I thought she was crying from happiness until my mom told me I should have taken my sister's feelings into consideration before telling them. It was odd. It seemed like no one was happy. My mom took Jane to her room, but my dad stayed. He told me that Jane was having a hard time with Jim. I believed them. Since then, Jane distanced herself more from me. When I tried speaking to her, she'd reply curtly. And when I brought it up with my mom, she said that she's going through a hard time so I shouldn't make it worse. So I left her alone. That was until Bob confessed that Jane had been texting him consistently for the past few weeks. He showed me the texts. She'd ask if she could call or meet him. She'd also attempt to text him late at night. The last one was when she sent him photos of her in revealing dresses and asked him to choose the prettiest. That's when he decided to tell me about it. Before anyone says anything, no, Bob didn't lead her on. His texts were dry, and frankly, if I wasn't so upset with my sister, I'd say, rude. He felt uncomfortable, but decided to put up with it because she was his sister. He also admitted that Jane had confessed to him years ago, but he had rejected her. It felt like everything was falling into place when he told me that. I was so hurt by her, I immediately confronted her when I got home. I thought she'd at least be ashamed, but she said that I stole him from her. What's worse is that my mom sided with her. I've always had a feeling she was my mom's favorite, but she was my favorite too. It made sense everyone loved Jane. I loved her too, but she betrayed me in the worst way possible. She even said she hated me and didn't want to see me again. No one sided with me. So I packed my things and left. My dad told me that I shouldn't leave because it's not appropriate for an unmarried girl to leave her parents' house. My mom even called me an intimacy worker for leaving to go to Bob's place. That hurt a lot. It took a long time for me to get over what they did. When I think about it, it still stings. Bob and I lived together before marriage. I also cut contact with my family. And Bob and I got married without inviting anyone from my side aside from a few close relatives. It was a lovely wedding, by the way. But a week ago, my cousin told me Jane had her wedding. I guess she went ahead with it. Today, though, Bob showed me a message he got on Instagram from her. He hadn't seen it because it was in the request section, but it dated back to a week ago. She confessed to him again and told him she'd make him happier than me if he gave her the chance to. I am upset. Really upset. 
He screenshotted it and blocked her and asked if it was okay to send it to Jim. But I said no, I don't know why. Jim deserves better, but I just don't want to deal with her anymore. I can't take it. I feel so guilty to keep this away from Jim. However, I don't want this to blow up in my face, especially when Bob and I have been living so peacefully now. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Damn. Your sister really wants intimate relations from your husband. I feel bad for you and her husband. My advice would be to watch UFC and boxing highlights for the next week and practice a combination strike. Example, left jab, right jab, and then a powerful left hook. Next time you see her, confront her and execute the combo strike. She will back off. Comment two, he took a screenshot of the message and blocked her, then asked if it was okay to send it to Jim. But I said no. I don't know why. Jim deserves better, but I just don't want to deal with her anymore. I can't take it. I feel so guilty for keeping this information from Jim. You should feel guilty for not telling him. Why wouldn't he deserve to know the truth? Now, for the update. Thanks for all the comments from last time. It's been a rough few months, so things got even messier. Bob's been getting anonymous messages and we both had a hunch it was Jane using different accounts. It's like she's obsessed or something. We were trying to ignore it, but it's hard when it's constant. Meanwhile, I've been trying to focus on work, but it's tough. I got passed over for a promotion, and I can't help but feel like my personal life is spilling into my professional one. It's like I can't catch a break. Then, out of nowhere, Jim shows up at our door. He's got this look on his face, like he's been hit by a truck. Turns out he found the messages Jane sent to Bob. He didn't get them from us, though. Someone else must have tipped him off. He's devastated, and I feel terrible. I should have told him, but I was so caught up in my own drama. Jim and I had a long talk. He told me about how things with Jane had been rocky for a while. He thought they were working through it, but now he's not so sure. I felt a pang of guilt for not being there for him. He's family, after all. The next day, Bob and I get a call from my parents. They're begging us to come over. We're hesitant, but we go. When we get there, it's like walking into a war zone. Jane's there and she's yelling at everyone. My parents are trying to calm her down, but she's not having it. In the middle of all this chaos, Jane suddenly turns to me and says she's sorry. She's crying, and it's the first time I've seen any real emotion from her in ages. She tells me she's been seeing a therapist and that she's been diagnosed with a mental health disorder. It's been affecting her for years, and she never got help until now. I'm stunned. All this time, I thought she was just out to get me. But she was struggling with something much deeper. It doesn't excuse what she did, but it does change how I see the situation. Bob's been my rock through all of this. He's been so patient, even when things got really tough. We've been talking about starting a family, but with everything going on, we've put it on hold. We want to make sure we're in a good place first. After Jane's apology, things start to shift. My parents are more understanding, and they're trying to mend fences. It's not perfect, but it's a start. Jim's still hurt, but he's talking to Jane about how they can move forward, if at all. Bob and I decide to give Jane another chance, but we set boundaries. No more late night messages, no more drama. If she wants to be in our lives, she has to respect our relationship. It's been a few weeks since then, and things are slowly getting better. Bob and I are focusing on us, on building a life together that's stable and happy. It's not easy, but we're getting there one step at a time. Thanks for reading. Thanks. My best friend let her boyfriend assault me and years later, she wants forgiveness. But when she crashes my wedding with my cheating fiance, I turn the tables and have her arrested for trespassing while I take her parents' offer to help as a fresh start. Throw away because I just wanted to vent and not have this connected to me. Sorry if it's a little long, but I have been holding this in for two years. 24-year-old female met 25-year-old female Lauren when we were in fourth grade. We were inseparable from that first icebreaker activity. Even when I went to a different school for junior high, we were sisters, even though we only saw each other two, three times a year. We went to the same high school and it was like nothing changed. Her mom and dad called me their daughter. People thought we were related in some way, and people would say our souls knew each other in a past life. I just wanted you guys to see how close we were and how much she really hurt me when she chose him over me. 
It was two years ago. We had just graduated nursing school and she invited me, her boyfriend, and my boyfriend for a couple's vacation. We were drinking. I only had half a spiked lemonade. I don't drink. I don't like the taste. The only times in my life where I had alcohol was when I turned 21. A sip of wine to see how it tasted and this half-consumed spiked lemonade. I told them I was going to bed because I was way too tired. So I went to our room. About two hours later, I feel someone crawl into our bed, and I assumed it was my boyfriend, obviously. So I started falling back to sleep until I feel my pants being taken off, and... a hand enter me. I sit up immediately because it was uncomfortable. My boyfriend keeps his nails short for work, so I shouldn't be getting almost daggers in me with nails. I push the person off, and it's him. I scream and punch him and run downstairs. I scream and cry to my boyfriend who was just passed out on the couch and tell him what happened. They started fighting and soon Lauren comes downstairs to help me break it up and she asks what happens and I tell her. He starts calling me crazy and then it switched to, I wanted him to, I was in the wrong room. Lauren tells me that maybe we should leave because it's causing drama, my mouth was in hell. So we left. The next day she calls and says that he says it was a mix up and he thought I was her. I try to get through to her that my bedroom was on the top floor and theirs was on the bottom. There's no way he got that mixed up. She tells me to just let it go. It was a mistake. It won't happen again. Don't ruin this for her. I hung up the phone, blocked her, erased her from my life, and I haven't spoken to her since then. I moved about 40 minutes away with my boyfriend. Five days ago, she shows up on my doorstep. I still keep in contact with her mom and dad. I sent them an RSVP for my wedding. I guess she found out where I live and shows up on my doorstep with her parents. She brought them to try and persuade me to forgive her and invite her. Her parents don't know why we don't talk anymore. I didn't want to embarrass her to her parents. She's their only child. She stood out there pleading and begging, and she has the nerve to say, let bygones be bygones, it was a long time ago, we both made mistakes. I told her, it was a mistake to let your boyfriend attack me and then kick me out but stay with him? Her parents' faces dropped. She clearly never told them, and they started going off, most of it in Spanish. They couldn't believe she'd do that. How could she let this happen? Is this the same one that attacked her cousin? They apologized profusely and left. I looked him up, and sure enough, he's in prison for... something I won't speak about here. She shows back up at my house, banging on the door, saying I ruined her life. And I should have just shut up and forgave her because she's not even with him anymore. Over my ring, I told her, Yeah, you're not with him because he's in prison now for something worse than what he did to me. You deserve everything you got now. Leave or I'll call the police. She was screaming and banging on my windows. I called the police and they told her she needed to leave. I called her parents to apologize and they said they'll leave me alone if that's what I want. And they understand if I'm furious with them. I told them absolutely not. You two are still my parents. You better show up to my wedding or then I'll be mad at you. Then I didn't feel bad about outing her, but she was their parents' only daughter. I know they call me their daughter, but I can never be what she is, was to them. I am kind of thinking maybe I should have just said we fell out over a different reason, but to try and still protect him after doing that to one of her family members. I'm conflicted. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1, I am sorry that happened to you. Happened. I hope you recover from it. As for the lady who was supposed to be your friend in her perfect world, she and her awful boyfriend would still be together, regardless of what he has done. But fortunately, this is not her perfect world. Thank the heavens. Comment 2. Is this the same person who attacked her cousin? Uh-oh. It seems like she may have a separate history of allowing her aggressive boyfriend to do such things, which the parents are already aware of. What a shame for them. Now for the update, thanks for sticking around for this update. So after that whole mess with Lauren and her parents, I thought I'd finally have some peace. But no, life had other plans. My wedding was coming up and I was neck deep in preparations, trying to forget the drama. Then out of nowhere, my fiance starts acting weird. He's distant, always on his phone, and I catch him lying about where he's been. My gut told me something was off and I decided to dig a little deeper. Turns out he's been in touch with Lauren, yeah, Lauren. He says they've been talking because he's worried about her, given everything that's happened. But I'm not buying it. 
They've been meeting up and he swears it's all innocent. But come on, after everything, this is the last thing I needed. I felt like I was living in some twisted soap opera where everyone's out to get me. I confronted him and we had a huge fight. He accused me of being paranoid and not trusting him. But how could I? After all the lies, I told him he had to choose. It was either me or his newfound friendship with Lauren. He chose me, or so he said, and he cut off all contact with her, or so I thought. The wedding day arrives, and it's supposed to be the happiest day of my life, right? Wrong. Halfway through the reception, Lauren shows up, uninvited, of course. She's drunk and causing a scene, saying she's still in love with my now husband, and that they've been seeing each other behind my back. My world just stopped. I couldn't breathe. The room was spinning and I felt like I was going to pass out. Everyone's staring and my husband is denying everything, but Lauren's persistent. She's got texts, photos, the works. My husband's face goes white as a sheet. He can't even look at me. I'm humiliated, heartbroken, and furious all at once. I told him to get out and I never want to see him again. The wedding's ruined and I'm left picking up the pieces of my shattered life. But here's where things take a turn. Lauren's parents, who were at the wedding, are just as shocked as I am. They come to me after the chaos has died down, and they're apologetic, saying they had no idea their daughter was capable of this. They offer to help me in any way they can, even offering to pay for the wedding expenses since it was their daughter who ruined it. I'm not sure what to do with their offer, but it's nice to know they're on my side. I guess they feel like they owe me after everything with their daughter. I'm still processing everything, but I'm starting to see that maybe I dodged a bullet with my now ex-husband. If he could lie to me about this, what else was he capable of? As for Lauren, she's out of my life for good. I can't forgive her, not after this. She's caused me nothing but pain, and I'm done with her drama. I need to focus on healing and moving on from this nightmare. Thanks for reading this mess of an update. My dad marries a woman I hate and kicks me out for a harmless prank. So I wait 10 years and crash their baby shower with a surprise of my own. My dad married Bridget 10 years ago. My brother and I were troublesome kids who did not like her. So we put purple dye in her specialty purple shampoo for blondes. It didn't work as well as we thought because we didn't realize dye needed to soak in. As a result, she was left with a few purple streaks she couldn't get out. Now, I'm not saying it was okay, but Bridget lost her mind. She was hysterical and screaming at my dad, saying she was going to hurt us and that she would never be in the house with us again. At one point, she began scratching herself because she was so distraught. Bridget ran off and my dad confronted us angrily. He said we ruined his life and that she was the only thing that mattered to him. Bridget refused to return to the house if we were there, so my dad banned us from the house. Our mom had primary custody anyway, he kept saying he would never forgive us. When I graduated high school, he refused to help me with college. I ended up working multiple jobs to get by, and my brother simply disappeared. I always thought this would blow over as I thought she was his midlife crisis. Before meeting Bridget, he was the definition of a stoic hard ass. Now he was acting like some obsessed teen boy. Well, we recently reconnected, and they are still together. My wife wanted me to play nice with him for financial reasons and for our daughter's future. She even wanted Bridget to help her get a job. My dad is willing to help us out but shows no remorse and says we need to understand that she is his life. Recently, they celebrated their 10th anniversary and Bridget's brother-in-law decided to play a prank and put some washable purple stuff in her hair. However, she had a difficult time getting it out of her very blonde hair. Don't get me wrong, he got in trouble for that, but there was no hysteria this time. My dad was laughing at her and made her pose for a picture. There were no ultimatums given. Apparently, he gets a pass because he's a huge prankster. Also, he pranked her way worse than I did. When I found out about this, I was angry. So it is okay for a grown-ass man to do it, but not a dumb kid? I called them up and said that Bridget needed to cut them out of her life if my dad wanted any relationship with me. My dad said I was being ridiculous as they were her only family and only parent figures. I reminded him that I was his freaking kid. He claimed she was much more anxious and insecure when I did it and insisted that it was different because he did it with love and that she was scared of what my brother and I would escalate to. I told him I hope the next prank is Nair and they can both frick off. I also said that unless she cuts out her brother-in-law and sister, 
we would have no more contact with them. My dad is backing Bridget 100%. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, you are the jerk. You and your brother did it out of spite. There's a difference. You don't need your dad or her. It doesn't matter if she cuts contact because she has nothing to do with you or your family. She has her own and you have your own. Edit from the comments, I thought you'd be 12, but no idiots here. 17 and close to being an adult, and you hated her for the full of it. You hated her and harmed her. Her brother-in-law is someone who loves her and didn't do it out of spite. And as you said, it was washable. It's not the die, it's the intention. You all made it clear you were trying to piss her off. Comment two, am I the jerk? I attacked my stepmom and brushed it off as jerk teenager things, but it's okay because it didn't even work. Years later, I tried to take advantage of a second chance with my dad for purely financial reasons. And when he didn't bow to my ultimatum, I cut him off. Obviously, you are the jerk. You were a jerk kid assaulting your stepmom out of hatred. And if you had not been banned from the home, I'm sure you would have escalated. Do you not see the difference between that and a joke from her brother-in-law done in good fun? Your dad and stepmom are better off without you. Now for the update, thanks for keeping up with my story. So, things have been wild lately. Just two weeks ago, my dad and Bridget decided to move across the country. Out of nowhere, they sold the house and packed up. They said they needed a fresh start, but I think it's because her brother-in-law is moving in next door to their old place. They're now in some small town in Maine, far from everyone. Since they moved, my dad's been calling nonstop, trying to patch things up. He says he's sorry for how things went down when we were kids, but he's still sticking by Bridget. He even offered to buy us plane tickets to visit them in their new place. My wife thinks we should go, but I'm not so sure. Back when we were kids, my brother and I were always getting into trouble. We were a handful, and I guess that's why my dad was so harsh on us. But after the whole purple shampoo incident, things got really bad. My brother took off, and I haven't seen him in years. I heard he's been in and out of trouble, but I don't even know where he is now. Anyway, my wife's been out of work for a while, and she's getting desperate. She's been hinting that maybe Bridget could help her find a job, even if it's just a remote position. I hate the idea, but we need the money. It's been tough with just my income, and with a kid to take care of, we can't afford to be picky. Just last week, my wife got a call from Bridget. She actually offered her a job at her friend's company. It's a good position, and the pay is decent. My wife was over the moon, but I felt sick about it. It's like we're selling out, accepting help from the woman who made my childhood a nightmare, but then the bomb dropped. Bomb. My dad called to say that Bridget's pregnant. They're expecting a baby in the fall. I couldn't believe it. After all these years, he's going to have another kid. It's like he's starting a whole new family and forgetting about us. I was fuming. I told him that if he thinks he can just replace us, he's got another thing coming. He tried to calm me down, saying that he wants us all to be a family. But I wasn't having it. I told him that unless he makes things right with me and my brother... He can forget about being a part of our lives. Then out of the blue, my brother called me. He'd heard about the move and the baby, and he was just as shocked as I was. He said he's been thinking about reaching out to our dad, trying to mend fences. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. After all this time, he wants to make peace? I've been torn about it. Part of me wants to reconnect with my dad, especially now that he's going to have another kid. But another part of me is still so angry about everything that's happened. My wife says we should at least go visit them in Maine, see if we can work things out. So we decided to go. We flew out to Maine last weekend, and it was... weird. Their new place is nice, but it's so different from our old home. Bridget was actually kind of nice to us, which threw me off. And my dad, he was trying so hard to make things right. We talked a lot about the past, about my brother, about everything. It was hard, but it felt good to get it all out in the open, and then my dad did something I never expected. He apologized. A real, sincere apology. He said he was wrong to choose Bridget over us, that he should have been there for us no matter what. It was a lot to take in. I didn't know what to say. My wife was crying, and even Bridget looked emotional. It was like we were finally breaking through all the years of anger and hurt. But then, as we were leaving, Bridget pulled me aside. She told me she was scared, that she didn't know how to be a mom, that she was worried she'd mess it up like she did with us. I didn't know what to say. I just told her that everyone makes mistakes. 
but it's never too late to make things right. We flew back home yesterday and I've been thinking a lot about everything. My dad's trying, really trying to be a better person and maybe Bridget is too. I don't know if we'll ever be a perfect family, but maybe we can at least be a family. Thanks for reading. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.